Now, there are six principles of building ambition that we will discuss as we go through this program. These principles work together, creating and directing energy. Directing your energy toward achievement. Directing your energy toward self-expression. Right now, we'll touch on the six principles in definition only. And later in the program, we'll get into each one separately. Here they are, the six principles of building ambition. Number one, positive self-direction. Knowing who you are and where you want to go. Accumulating the knowledge and being prepared for opportunities that come your way. Number two, self-reliance. Taking responsibility for your own life. Taking responsibility for whatever happens to you knowing that you have made the conscious decisions that are now affecting your life, that what's happening in your life is the direct result of your activity, counting on you. Number three, self-discipline. Ambition at the daily level, knowing that you can reach your goals one step at a time, one day at a time, one activity at a time, and doing everything it takes to get there every day. Number four, self-enterprise. Consistently being able to create opportunity and consistently being able to take advantage of it. Being aware enough to see it. Skilled enough to make it work for you. Number five, working with others. We must make ourselves stronger to benefit us all. We must succeed at the service of others. Learning how to take your skills, enterprise, reliance, and direction to the table to create true success. And the sixth principle of building ambition is self-appreciation. Appreciate your accomplishments. Appreciate your potential. Knowing that in one day you completed all you set out to do. Fueling your ambition by fueling your appreciation of yourself. Each of these principles, when activated correctly, help to develop your ambition, your eager desire to get more out of life, to gain wealth, to gain prosperity, to have a better family, to build a better business. All of these principles work together in creating and directing energy toward achievement and self-expression. All of these six principles are required to build the three cornerstones of a truly ambitious person. Focused concentration, resilience, and integrity. You'll know you have unlocked the power of ambition when these three qualities, the cornerstones, become words that best describe you. So when we continue, we'll get started with principle number one, positive self-direction. In the last session, we discovered that ambition is the fuel of achievement. That achievement is truly self-expression in its strongest and clearest form. So if achievement is based on self-expression, then it only makes sense that there is one true place to find ambition. Inside yourself. In every thought, in every movement, in every motivation. Self-expression. Isn't self-expression really self-direction? How you think, how you move, how you motivate yourself? It is. And ambition is a result of self-direction. One of the six principles for building ambition. Positive self-direction says, I know who I am and I know where I want to go. I am accumulating knowledge and experiences and feelings and philosophies that will help prepare me for opportunities that I know will show up without notice. Positive self-direction. You know who you are and where you want to go. You've already spent a great deal of time thinking about it. You've been working on the parts of your personality that will make you better. Working on your attitude. Working on your health. Working on your time management skills. Putting it all down on paper and you constantly see yourself in the place that you want to be. 
As you talk with yourself every day, how often do you ask, is what I am doing today getting me closer to where I want to be tomorrow? Am I making the daily adjustments necessary? Am I doing all that it takes? Will I keep on doing it until? Direction determines destination. Here's a question you need to ask yourself. Are all of the disciplines that I'm currently engaged in taking me where I want to go? Are all of the disciplines I am presently engaged in taking me where I want to go? What an important question at the beginning of the month, at the beginning of the week, at the beginning of the day. Because here's what you don't want to ever do, kid yourself. You know, kid your neighbor and kid me and kid the marketplace if you want to, but gosh, you can't kid yourself. With your fingers crossed, hoping you'll arrive at a good destination when you're not even headed that way. You say, well, maybe the wind will take me. Well, there's a chance. But you've got to take charge. You've got to ask yourself often, am I? Am I doing the disciplines that are taking me in the direction that I want to go? I don't want to be faked out here and think I'm on the way to financial success when there's not a prayer, not a hope. I don't want to be faked out hoping that there's someone else who's going to take care of it, take care of me. They're not going to take care of it. They're not going to take care of me. What if all of your negative relatives turn positive? What'll that do for your fortune and your future? Not much. If prices come down a little, what'll that do for your fortune and your future and your sophistication and your culture? What'll that do? Not much. If the economy gets a little better, what'll that do? Answer, not much. If you don't make plans of your own, you'll fit into someone else's plans. And guess what they have planned for you? You're right. Not much. Most people wake up every morning counting on this not much list. And that's why what they have is not much. Not much hope. Not much promise. Not much progress. They're driving what they don't want to drive, living where they don't want to live, doing what they don't want to do. Forget the thief waiting in the alley to snatch your purse. What about the thief in your mind? Lazy, not stimulated by thoughts and questions. Don't become a victim of yourself. Ask yourself these questions. Is this the direction I want for my life? Is it someone else's direction? Is it a goal that I have been ingrained with since my childhood? Is it my parents or my spouses or my bosses or my children's? Is it mine? Ask yourself these questions. Debate them if you will. Debate the ideas I am sharing with you on this program later. After you've heard all the ideas, debate what will work for you and won't work for you. But most importantly, get into the debate of your inner mind. What am I doing that works? What am I doing that doesn't work? Debate it all. Work with your mind to figure out the best possible direction for you. Your self-direction. Your self-direction. You hear stories all the time of kids, middle-class kids, upper-middle-class kids. You hear stories all the time about good kids that are having problems. Their parents are highly successful. They want their kids to be highly successful. But the kids are having problems. Maybe not with their grades, but with how they feel about themselves. The parents push their kids into one career direction, probably to take over the family business or follow in the family footsteps. It's the parents' direction, not the kids' direction. The kids know that something's just not right. And for these kids, something goes wrong. I know this lady that comes from a medical family. Everybody's in medicine. All of the kids grew up and went to school to be in medicine. It's just what you did. You grew up and became a doctor. Now, it wasn't a bad upbringing. 
they had everything they needed, but they also had the extra push to go into medicine. As a matter of fact, my friend says that they were raised with such tunnel vision that she didn't even have the slightest idea how food got into the grocery store, how cars got into the lots, how money got into the banks. She didn't know. The issues were never brought up at the dinner table. She remembers back in the late 70s, the first time she went to look for a job to make extra money in college, that the best jobs in the paper, the ones for qualified people, were only advertising a monthly salary of $900. $900. She thought the average person on the street, the average non-qualified person, made at least $3,000 a month. What a difference. What a shock. To be so sheltered from real life, to be so far off in what the average person made for a living, it was a real revelation. So she started asking questions. I mean, if she was that far off in her judgment of average earnings, maybe she was way off on other thoughts in life, too. Maybe there was more to life than being in medicine. Maybe this wasn't what she wanted to do after all. Maybe she finally found the reason why she hadn't been happy through all of her academic achievements. Sure enough, she figured out that the medical goals were not her own, only those of her parents. And even though she was chastised by her family for not following through with the family goals, she is now much happier following her own path. Direction must be your own, or it can end up being damaging. Damaging to your soul, damaging to your spirit, damaging to your health. Now, there's one more part to my friend's story of growing up in a medical family. It's a part that nobody in her family talks much about, yet it happened. And it's an important part to tell. While my friend was pushing for perfection in school, she also pushed herself into an eating disorder. She ended up with this a few years before anyone really knew anything about anorexia. So there wasn't much help available. But a few years later, about the same time she started asking questions about life, she determined with the help of a specialist that this eating disorder had nothing to do with food or the lack of it. It had to do with control. It had to do with direction somebody else's direction for her. Direction has to be your own, or it can be damaging. So parents, be watchful of how you motivate your children. Give them all of the resources to make their own choices and back them up. Give them the freedom to discover their own direction. It may not be the direction you'd hope for, but it is their direction and with their own direction, they will reach their own destination. It just doesn't work out any other way. Now, if you are one of those people who had the revelation that the life and goals you're pursuing are not your own, you can change it, just like my friend did. But the change doesn't come overnight. The direction of life can come overnight. A new goal can reach out and grab you in one day give you the push and the ambition and the momentum to change your course, where you want to be. But the final destination does not happen overnight. It still takes a lot of work. It still takes time for the plans to build, to grow, to run the course. It takes patience. Let's say you have a brilliant idea for starting a new company. What's the first thing you do? You write a business plan and a marketing plan, and complete the financial pro formas. You don't expect to have an idea one day and a prospering business the next. No, it doesn't work that way. You've got to take all the right steps, give it care and nurturing and time. Lots of time for your investment to start reaping rewards. You've got to be patient. But here's what does happen. As soon as you turn a new direction, I'm telling you, you've got an excellent chance of a brand new destination. A brand new destination in three years, a brand new destination in five years. 
Not a brand new destination tomorrow. A brand new destination that will come just as surely as you follow and adhere to the disciplines required. Now, there are two parts to self-direction, positive self-direction. Part one, self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is knowing who you are and what you want to do with your life. Self-knowledge is knowing how you feel about yourself. Self-knowledge has a lot to do with your philosophy, and your philosophy has a lot to do with shaping your attitude, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about life, how you feel about your direction, how you feel about others around you, your attitude. You've got to know, you've got to gather up enough knowledge and information to know, to know what's right for you. How do you gather up information? Well, you can start with your own experiences. The best way to know if something works for you the right way is to do it the wrong way. Now, you can't keep doing it the wrong way. You've got to be smart enough to say, hey, this isn't working, and change it. Start doing it the right way. Then search for the knowledge and apply what's right for you in your life. Develop your own attitudes and philosophies around your own experiences and the experiences of others. Take all of the information you have gathered and compile it, consider it, debate it, tear it apart. Turn it upside down. Look at it from your own perspective and refine it to suit you. Rearrange it. Throw some of it out. Keep what you think will work for you. And most importantly, make sure that what you end up doing is the product of your own conclusion. Make sure that the knowledge that you are building is your own self-knowledge. The first component of positive self-direction Self-knowledge. The second component of positive self-direction is self-preparation. Self-preparation, being ready for the opportunities when they show up in your life. Being ready for the sales call that may make you a fortune. Being ready for the meeting that may positively affect your career. Being ready for it all in expectation that it will come. Now, for those of you who are parents, when you found out that a new member of the family was going to come along in nine months or so, what did you do? You started getting ready. You started reading the books on how to best handle a baby. You started buying everything you needed to care for the baby. You started asking advice from friends and relatives who've already had a baby or two. You asked questions, defined your parenting style, got ready for a major change in how you live and the hours you keep and the financial obligations you have to live up to, you started getting ready. Well, preparing for your own life is pretty much the same. Defining a goal, planning a goal, knowing that with enough planning and dedication and hard work, you'll meet your goal. You know that it will be tough for the first few years, but the sacrifice is well worth it. So in the meantime, you've got to be ready for it. If you wish to be ruler over many, you've got to be faithful with few. If you wish to have power and influence over many, be the leader of many and get the return from many. Be faithful when there's just a few. Faithful meaning disciplined. Be disciplined when there are just a few. And in your own enlightened self-interest, that gives you the best chance to be the ruler or to have power, or to have influence, or to have a place of honor among the many. Be faithful when there's just a few. Someone says, if I had a big organization, I'd really pour it on, but I've just got a few and I don't know where they are. Come on, when you've got just a few, you could know where all of them are. What if we interviewed parents who had a fairly large family who have all grown up and gone, what if we said to them, what happened to all of your children? What if they said, I don't know, they just all wandered off? And we asked, well, where did they all go? And they say, who knows, they're just all gone. We're just going to have to have some more. No. 
If you've got a few employees, if you've got a few distributors, if you've got a few people, that's the time to sharpen your communication skills of being in touch, getting prepared, giving the most of your heart and soul. That's the time when you just have a few. In your own enlightened self-interest, set up the lines when there's a few. Be totally absorbed when there's just a few. Then you put yourself by reputation and by skill in line so that when a leadership position opens with the many, you'll be called. That's the key. Now the same thing goes with your money. Someone says, oh, if I had a fortune, I'd really take good care of it. But I've only got a paycheck and I don't know where it goes. Wow, did you ever hear that expression, I don't know where it all goes? Did you ever hear that? Oh, we'd love to have you run our company. You don't know where it all goes? Wow, we'd love to have you run the world. It just gets away from you? It just disappears? Come on. Positive self-direction says, in your own enlightened self-interest, pay real close attention to just a few dollars. Really know where they come from and know where they go. Set up the disciplines when the amounts are small and you'll be on your way to handling it when the amounts are many. Enlightened self-interest, positive self-direction, self-preparation. Be ready for tomorrow by doing all that you can today, setting your goals. Set a goal that will make you stretch for what it will make of you to achieve it. What a brand new reason for setting goals. What an all-encompassing challenge to have a better vision of the future, to see what it will make of you to achieve it. And here's why. The greatest value in life is not what you get. The greatest value in life is what you become. The major question to ask on the job is not what am I getting here, the major question to ask is, what am I becoming here? It's not what you get that makes you valuable. It's what you become that makes you valuable. Set the kind of goals that will make something of you to achieve them. So there you have the two components of positive self-direction. Number one, self-knowledge. Knowing who you are and what you want to do with your life. And number two, self preparation, getting ready for the opportunities before they come your way. You need both aspects for positive self-direction, figuring out who you are and what you want, and being prepared for the day you reach your goals, being ready, being worthy, becoming the person you need to be in pursuit of what you want. What good is an opportunity if you're not prepared to take advantage of it? It's no good won't do a thing for you. Be prepared. Now here's what's called the self-knowledge acid test. Quickly, without thinking too much about it, quickly list your three most important long-term work-related goals. Is it a client you've been trying to sign for several months? Is it a major sale you've been trying to make? Is it a promotion? Is it a partnership in the firm? Quickly list your three most important long-term work-related goals. Achievements that you want to make. Achievements that will take a while to get. Write them down. Again, without thinking too much about it, quickly list your three most important personal and spiritual goals. Things that will make a difference in your personal life. Is it going to church more often than holidays? Grasping all you can from the Sunday sermon? Is it spending more quality time with your kids? Is it turning the TV off during the dinner hour and actually talking about the important things in life with your family? Is it making more dates with your spouse? Is it planning a much needed family vacation? What is it? What are the important goals in your personal and spiritual life? Is one of them making a conscious effort to exercise more, to eat better? to lose some weight, to get in shape? What are the three most important personal and spiritual goals that you have? Write them down. Doesn't matter what they are, just write them down. 
Now, take some time to really visualize what the achievement of these goals would look like. What does your future hold for you if you landed that big client? What does your future look like if you got that promotion? If you spent more time with your family? If you planned more outings with your spouse? What does your future look like? Really spend some time on this now. It's important stuff. What does it all look like? Ask yourself, is this really my goal? Is this truly what I want? Is it a positive goal? Is it important enough to me to become what it takes to reach this goal? Is it mine? Is it worth it? If your three goals on the career side and three goals on the personal side don't stand up to these questions, you need to take some time to carefully redefine a few things. Redefine your list. Redefine where it is that these goals came from. Redefine what actually is important to you. Redefine how hard you'll really work to get them. Now, there are two parts to this goal-setting and redefining process. There's two parts. Number one, don't set your goals too low. An interesting thing that we teach in leadership, don't join an easy crowd. You won't grow. Go where the expectations are high. Go where the demands are high. Go where the pressure is on to perform, to grow, to change, to develop, to read, to study, to develop skills. Now here's the second part on setting goals. Number one is don't set your goals too low. Number two is don't compromise. Don't sell out. There were some things I went for back in those early years that I paid too big a price for. If I'd known back then how much it was going to cost me, I never would have gone for them. But I didn't know. Don't sell out. An ancient phrase says, count the cost. Count the cost if it won't make you happy to get it. If you become less in your pursuit of getting it, if it's not worth the life you'll lead after you get it, it's not worth it. Now let's talk a little more about self-preparation. Self-preparation has two benefits. The first benefit of self-preparation is that it moves you toward your goal. You've already got it in mind. You know where you want to go. You're getting ready for it. You're doing all the things you're supposed to do. And by getting ready to achieve your goals, you're moving closer to your goals. That's how it works. The second major benefit to self-preparation is that it refuels your ambition. Your activity refuels your ambition. The things that you are doing today are getting you ready for tomorrow. It's exciting. You know that you're getting closer every day. Ambition must be kept alive, be kept active, must continue to move forward. Otherwise, you're just daydreaming. You must keep active, keep moving forward so your ambition can fuel you, motivate you, get you where you want to be. Self-preparation. The benefits are, number one, it moves you toward your goals, and number two, it refuels your ambition. Be prepared. Get ready. This method of self-preparation involves three steps. Step one. Carefully consider where the next opportunity for reaching your goal will originate. Where will it come from? Will it come from networking with your colleagues? Will it come from reading the last book that you bought? The book that's still sitting on your shelf waiting to give you some answers? Will it come from you taking the time to think it out? Where will it come from? The next opportunity that will push you forward. If you don't know, here's what you have to do. For each major goal of yours, the top priorities on your list, for each of these, take out a separate piece of paper, one single sheet per major goal, write down your goal at the top, and start listing all reasonable resources. Write down every possible place that you could find the opportunity to achieve this goal. 
and with each resource, classify them. Ask yourself, is this resource a sure thing? A good bet? About even chances? Unlikely? A long shot? Ask yourself these questions and classify all of the resources you have written down. That's the first step. The second step in this method of self-preparation is to make sure you know what you need to do to be prepared for your opportunities. Take your sure things first. Figure out what you need to do to be prepared when they happen. Break down your preparation into concrete steps. Make sure that you know exactly what you have to do to take advantage of the opportunity when it comes your way. Let's say that one of the top priorities on your career list of goals is to get this new client. Let's take it one step further to say that on your resource list for this goal is to have a lunch meeting with a friend who just happens to be the mentor of the client you're going after. Is this friend of yours a sure bet on your resource list? Well, let's say he is. I mean, you know this guy is a tremendous consulting source for the client you want. The client you want really listens to the opinions and advice of your friend. So you're getting ready to have lunch with your friend. What do you do? You've got to make sure that you're up on all the knowledge and the industry data that will impress your friend. Make him realize that he knows someone who could benefit from your knowledge and your vitality and your spirit and your experience. Impress him. Impress him so much that he goes back to his friend, the client you're after, and tells this prospective client of yours that he needs to do business with you. Be prepared. Go through your entire list of goals and resources and classify them. Break each resource into concrete steps of preparation. Start by working on the sure bets first and then move down the line. The long shots will come through every so often, but start with the resources that will serve you best now. Get ready for the opportunities before they come your way. Step three in the self-preparation method is to do all you can to make each opportunity more likely to happen. After you've determined what you have to do to get ready to be prepared, after you've determined this, see what you can do to expedite the process. What can you do to increase the likelihood of this opportunity? Go over it and over it and over it. Use these three methods again and again as you assess where you are now and where you have to go next to keep moving toward the achievements that are most important to you. Step one, consider your resources. Step two, determine what you have to do to get ready. Step three, expedite the opportunities. And by the way, this method of self-preparation works wherever you are in your journey, whether you're close to your goals or whether you're just starting your journey of self-direction. This method works. Have working knowledge to draw from. Continually work on yourself in preparation of where you want to be. Build a reservoir of thoughts and ideas and philosophies and experiences that are your own. Build, grow, change, get ready, be prepared. Be prepared for a life worth living. Now here are the four ifs that make life worthwhile. Number one, life is worthwhile if you learn. Nothing worse than being stupid. Life is worthwhile if you learn. Learn from your personal experiences. Learn from other people's experiences. Second, life is worthwhile if you try. Now you've got to take what you've learned and see if you can try your hand at it. Someone says, well, you can't try, you have to do. No, you have to try. I put the bar up two feet and ask the kids who can jump two feet. I can, some say. I can't, some say. I don't know, some say. How are you going to know? You don't. You've just got to try. Just back off and run at it. How are you going to know if you don't try? Now, what if you knock the bar down? Does that mean you can't jump two feet? No. You have to what? Try it again. 
Of course, you have to try. Try it another way, but try. Try your hand at it. When the record book on you is finished, let it show your wins and your losses, but don't let the record book show that you didn't try. Next, life is worthwhile if you stay. You've got to learn to stay. Now, you don't have to stay forever. Just stay till you see it through. A guy builds a foundation, and then he wanders off somewhere and builds another foundation. He's got these foundations scattered all across the country. I mean, no walls, no roofs, just a bunch of foundations. Not a good reputation. Stay. You don't have to stay forever. Just stay to finish something. Don't fall into the trap of less than refined sophistication. Stay till it's over. The fourth if that makes life worthwhile, one is if you learn, two is if you try, three is if you stay, and fourth if that makes life worthwhile is if you care. Caring is a unique human experience that is so vital and so powerful and so all-encompassing and so far-reaching. If you care at all, you'll get some results. If you care enough, you can get magnificent results. To lead a life worth living, you've got to learn, you've got to try, you've got to stay, and you've got to care. Develop your positive self-direction. Do these things we've discussed. Remember the four ifs, and you're on your way to building a life worth living.